Welcome back to plasterer.org.uk Right, today we're going to be doing some work in this lovely summer house. Let's take a look. Okay, as you can see from this ceiling, it's been boarded, not by me. Um, it's not like a perfect uh, hexagon or octagon uh, because the back wall is slightly longer than the other walls, they're not equidistant to each other which causes it to look a little bit odd. So uh, the clients asked me to try and do something with it. Initially we were looking at doming the thing but that would have been a massive um, twiddly job. Um, so what we're going to do instead is where these angles are we're going to smooth these out um, into, well, into curves basically but we're going to keep the angles that are coming down from those curved angles. So initially, um, all you can do really is get some bonding in here. Uh, this, these kind of ceilings, obviously you need to have had some experience in messing about with curves and corners internally, but um, it's quite a twiddly job. Don't really know how it's going to turn out until you, uh, until you get going. Now I've had to use a small trowel here. Again, this is a, this is a miniature Marshall town. They're not very flexible. Um, if you try and use too big a trowel on such a small curve, uh, where the other two parts uh, of the angles that are going downwards meet your trowel, it's very difficult to um, to get a curve on there with a full size trowel. So you would need to use something smaller, as this is. Okay, so we speeded this up a bit, obviously, otherwise you'll be here for about eight hours with me. Anyway, um, yeah, so they're going to take that curve all the way around. And the idea of this is to, is to blend it in so it goes from like a, what looks like a sort of a small dome in the center and then comes out to the edges, but those, um, those angles that are coming out and down from that central part they will remain we're not going to be curving those off as well because um, yeah then we'd have to do the whole ceiling and what we're basically doing here is going to put a curve on this as we go around and you, you'll only really be able to see uh, what's happening as, uh, as we progress now again here as I say I'm just um, this is just a bonding coat that's going on this has all been uh, boarded and, and taped and also filled by the uh, uh, by the guy that built the actual um, summer house. I think he was hoping that it would just get um, painted but, um, but the, the client wasn't happy with this last little detail so that's what we're attempting to sort out today. Again now where these part of these curves meet the angles that are going downwards uh, again, the only way you can get in there is freehand with a small tool like this. Um, you can't really do anything with a bigger trowel for blending in. And uh, this kind of thing is, is trial and error. None of, as I say, none of these panels are equidistant to each other, so each little corner and curve you do is slightly different from the next one. But the, uh, the idea is that the end result makes the whole thing blend in once it's been painted white. It is a time consuming job. Um, this is the kind of thing I'd want to do on a daily basis. Um, give me a nice big flat ceiling or wall any day. But uh, this is where we're going. some of these areas we can go back to a bigger trail because we're starting to spread that little curve out flattening it slightly as we go around but uh, you can probably see uh, 
what we're going for. This starts to uh, make a bit more sense as we go. Again, see on areas like this um, where the distances aren't equal, um, a small tool is the only way you can kind of where these angles are now meeting, actually curve those. It's not something that you would try as uh, as a novice, basically. I mean, I have enough trouble um, doing this kind of work. But it sometimes just makes a nice change to do something that's uh, a bit more challenging, uh, a bit different. Slowly coming together, putting a little bit, building this out, going towards the centre. Again, on a video like this, you can only see so much of the uh, of the detail, but it gives you an idea. The centre part. Um, my aim is to keep that just bolted without having to bond. Uh, I'm going to take that into a square, and then just fill that around it and feather that in. see it's a lot of um, fiddling around with a small tool in certain areas because once you put the, uh, the stuff on with the large trowel just where the ends of your trowel meet uh, at these funny angles it will dig little grooves in there and the, literally the only way you can lose those grooves on a kind of project like this is to take them out with that small tool as I said it's quite time consuming but you've got a fairly good working time with bonding so, uh, so that's not a bad thing. I mean, even speeded up to this pace, uh, you can tell it's uh, not a short, easy job. And even after doing um, things like this, similar, uh, for the amount of years that I have, uh, I mean, I'm confident that it'll look, it'll look, it'll look good enough at the end. <laughs> but uh, but you still never quite know how it's gonna look until you until you get to that place. <coughs> now here I'm just trimming those um, edges off. You can see there where the angles are from the downward uh, parts of the ceiling go to the top of the walls but it's just nice to clean this up uh, it's still quite wet at this point right now that's starting to look like something let's clean those rough edges up with a small tool okay now we're coming on to the finish now if you watch carefully again you can see this isn't straightforward because although it doesn't show much on the camera the curve between the flat square basically and coming down onto the uh, onto the ceiling panels is uh, again it's a twiddly job this goes on a bit easier than the bonding did because you've built most of, most of it out with the bonding but uh, again, uh, I'm using a small trowel. You can see the trowel grooves uh, in that bit that was just above my head then. Um, you can only really get rid of these as you go and as the, uh, as the finish starts to dry. So <clears throat> at this stage is the point of getting it on as usual, as quickly as you can to uh, get the area covered and then uh, at this point also you'll glance it and think wow it's a bit of a mess but uh, I suppose the artistic part of this comes in as it starts to dry and you're working all these angles with small trowel, small tool um, in some cases uh, a normal size uh, a normal size trowel 
finishing off round edges. I'm pretty sure this one does get a taste of my uh, Ultra Flex. Somewhere near the end of the project. Again, here we are taking out those grooves um, with the small tool. I mean, even speeded up the, uh, the video is quite long, guys, but it's um, it just gives you an idea of how it's done. take on any ceiling that's a complicated shape that has been boarded by someone else um, yeah you're probably always going to find it a challenge oh I know a lot of guys that basically you know, just wouldn't do it oh <laughs> they say they'll quote and uh, yeah I don't think they do at the end of the day start to fill in and the trail mark you can really start to get out as as the pulsar starts to dry. Managing you know, to hit the larger areas. I think there may have been a teeny bit of blistering on one part of this. Again you have to be careful not to uh, not to overwork it too soon which again it is quite easily done on a smaller area. And you can see those trail marks there. I'm taking them out with the use of the small tool. Let's try and blend those curves in. You can see the light changing there as the uh, sun starts to go down uh, and we're Relying on the old floodlight. Take more of those edges out. Again, I'd take on something like this uh, once in the blue moon, but um, if another one came up the following day, I'd probably decline. using the brush at this stage around the edge just to try and feather that because we're not covering the whole ceiling feather that in nicely I think I might be using the ultra flex on it there actually because uh, yes I am uh, because you've got that extra flexibility that basically you need on something like this when you're blending something in uh, on a curve like this and it's quite complicated um, the more flexible your trowel, the less chance you've got it dragging, a bit dragging around the edge. And the better I found uh, for feathering in. I found that ultra flex trowels are very good um, for feathering your plaster in if you have to feather in a joint. I mean, ideally, I don't like putting joints in things, but um, when it has to be done, then a, then a very flexible trowel is the ideal. As you can see, there's a constant uh, use of the small tool. Using the fillet knife there as well. <clears throat> Having on some of those areas to use just the toe of the trowel. Again, because um, if you're not careful, uh, you could dig more new grooves in there. This is obviously starting to uh, to pick up now. <clears throat> so I'm putting some water on probably sooner than I would uh, if this was a flat a flat wall. But again, it's any of these um, these dodgy angles that you're trying to pull them all into one uh, big circular curve, basically. 
even though you can see as you look around the edge that those angles uh, in the board are remaining there but the idea of this is if you blend it in well that um, once this is painted um, which we'll see at the end it should uh, should look pretty good now also here what I'm trying to do to get a nicer finish on these is I'm um, wetting it down this is quite dry at this point I'm wetting the surface down and I'm using uh, the palm of my hand on part of that some parts gently um, using a screwed up uh, piece of plastic but you've got to make sure it's wet enough that it can slide over that again I'm actually using the palm of my hand again here to just feather that down and blend it in again you need a lot of water um, on this as you're doing this kind of thing otherwise it, it just starts to drag as you can tell as it's starting to dry how well it kind of blends in plus of course your hand is nice and flexible and moves in all different directions uh, and you, you never get a trail to do the same thing I mean, if this was your own job, um, after this stage, or once the thing's properly dried, uh, you could very carefully go over it with some uh, some sandpaper. There we basically have the finished article. See what I mean about the uh, the curve going to points with the angles that come down. It's a very um, awkward thing to do, but as long as they are blended in from your curves uh, as I say once the paint is on there <coughs> then uh, it should look absolutely fine there we go and here we go with the paint on now you can see how that blends in and it just takes that edge off of that right guys uh, Thanks for staying to the end of that if you did, and uh, thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing. The next um, Ask the Plasterer is on the 4th of January, uh, so that's on a Monday at 7pm, so I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully I'll see you at that. Um, yeah, it's Christmas now, though it's going to be a bit of a tier 4 London lockdown, nobody's allowed around Christmas, but <laughs> hopefully we're going to enjoy it anyway. Um, you take care now, thanks for watching. Bye for now.